Hey guys, this is Max and today I want to talk about the Mamiya RZ67. As usual, I want to provide you an overview of its most important features and show you some sample photos. So let's take a look. The Mamiya RZ67 is a medium format camera that was originally designed for studio use, as you can probably see, because this beast here actually weighs two 0.5 kilograms, so almost five pounds, and it's kind of heavy to carry around. But nevertheless, it's quite a lot of fun using it just like that in the field. But you might consider bringing along a tripod for longer portrait sessions. As is usual for cameras like this one, it is a modular camera system. So all parts are basically interchangeable. You can, you do have interchangeable lenses, viewfinders, even ground glasses, film winders, and of course film bags. With respect to the film bags, um, it supports, um, of course, mostly 120 and 220 film bags um, in all typical medium format formats. So 6x7, 6x6 and 6x4.5. Um, and in addition to that, there's also a film bag uh, for Polaroid film and one for 4x5 inch film. Uh, so this is very interesting and you might take want to take a look at this. And most importantly, um, this particular model that I'm holding here, uh, the Pro 2, already supports, uh, already supports digital bags. So given that you do have a plate, an adapter plate for your digital bag, you can even attach these and not only shoot film with it. As you can see here, the camera has bezels focusing. So the focusing mechanism is not inside the lens and you're not turning anything on the lens, but instead you're changing the distance between uh, your subject or and the lens or actually the lens and the film uh, using the bellows focusing. And you have all sorts of indication here, indications here on the side of the camera. On the right of the camera, you have your film advance and three different modes. The standard setting is here in the middle. In addition to that, you have an M mode, which stands for multiple exposure. The M mode basically lets you expose one in the same frame multiple times until you change it back to uh, your standard setting. The R mode lets you rotate the back, so you can change the orientation between portrait and landscape mode. There's even a little indication on top of the film back that lets you know in which mode you are. In addition to that, you can also see that in the viewfinder, of course. There are different viewfinders available for this camera. The standard viewfinder is a waist level viewfinder that has no particular features and does not support automatic exposure, but it does have a magnifier that helps you focus correctly. But as I just mentioned, there is an AEF mode on this particular camera, so it does support automatic exposure as long as you have the correct viewfinder attached to it. And that would be, for example, the AE Prism Finder that supports automatic exposure and has small LED indications inside the viewfinder telling you about your exposure and whether it's correct or not. Uh, and once you put it to AEF, uh, it's uh, basically doing it automatically like you would expect from a modern GSLR. On the left side of the camera, we have a standard flash hot shoe. And here, in addition to that, you have also a plug for an uh, electronic shutter release and of course a standard remote uh, cable release shutter. The camera is based on the RB67, which was first introduced in 1970. The main difference to this earlier model is that the RB67 was a fully mechanical camera and there was, I think, not a single piece of plastic in it. So it's more like a Hasselblad and this one here is much more advanced. So depending on how you are, uh, if you're a purist, you might want to take a look at the RB67, which can be had for very little money today. And it is still a great camera and has a lot of great lenses. But if you do want to have some um, kind of nice features like the automatic exposure, a mode that this particular camera has and you do want to uh, ha have support for electronics, um, then you might want to take a look at the RZ67. As you can see here on the left side, the camera supports shutter speeds from 1 for hundreds of a second up to 8 seconds and uh, as is typical the bulb mode. In addition to that, you have an automatic exposure mode 
and an RBL compatibility mode. RB stands for the earlier, or RBL stands for the earlier RB lenses. The overall handling of the camera is great once you get used to it. As I mentioned earlier, it's of course primarily designed for studio use. But once you know how to put your hands and fingers and how to hold it in a kind of stable manner, um, without interfering with be bevels focusing on all that and holding it in a way so that, so that you can advance the film and press the shutter and all that, um, it is really, really a great camera. And what I noticed um, when using it that it was always fun for the protagonist and they liked the this shutter sound, uh, a very kind of interesting click, a loud click to it. Um, people can of course also see the leaf shutter inside the lens so they <laughs> get a feel for the mechanical quality that is going on inside of the camera. And people were always super impressed when I uh, took it with me and, and kind of carried this huge and gigantic camera. The lenses for this camera are amazing. And one of the main reasons for buying it for me was this particular lens that you can see here, the 110 millimeter f 2.8 lens, which is quite a wide aperture for medium format and for this particular 110 millimeter lens, which is basically the standard um, 50 millimeter equivalent for 35 millimeter film on a medium camera, medium format camera with a six by seven ratio. That was kind of a long, complicated sentence. So this is a standard lens and it uh, features a pretty wide open aperture. Uh, great bokeh, uh, great sharpness, great overall quality. And that is particularly the point. Why would you use a camera like that? Because of the quality of the negatives, because of the size of the negatives and because of the overall handling and how it feels using it. This of course is not a fast camera. If I um, wanna be super fast, I would go for something smaller, lighter. But what is convenient here is the rotating back. That is a lot of fun because you don't have to change the orientation of the camera. You can, it makes it also easier focusing because of the bellows focusing, because of the fine tuning knob for focusing. All these features are really, really great. Um, especially with the auto exposure mode, there's not much you can do wrong with this camera once you kind of figured out the basic functionality. And what I could imagine, since I don't have a winder for this camera, I can't really talk about that. Um, but I can imagine that it makes it fast enough for most use cases. As you know, I have a Mamiya 645 Pro TL with a winder attached, an automatic one. And as I said earlier, I always feel like that I'm burning through film a lot quicker with a winder. And here I only have this manual film advance and also I really have to cock the shutter after each shot and, and do all that and it just changes the way I shoot portraits with this camera and it also changes the way my models react and inter interact with me as a photographer. So this for me is a very special camera that in some way creates a special atmosphere maybe similar to TLRs um, because they're so curious and so interesting because people are curious and they're so interesting these cameras um, but of course the advantage here is that I not only have a waist level viewfinder which can be great in some um, instances but I also have this AE prism finder that makes it very easy to uh, shoot portraits on eye level so um, this was me rambling uh, about the Mamiya 67 and uh, you can already feel that I really like it uh, I really enjoy shooting it so without further ado, I want to show you some sample photos that I took, the very first sessions I basically had with this camera, so you can judge for yourself.
So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like this, please leave me a comment in the comment sections below and maybe even subscribe to my channel. Uh, as you know, I really appreciate that. So um, I hope to see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.